Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here and today I'm going to be building a diving bell for my 20,000 bricks under the sea cabinet. Basically a sort of spherical pressurised uh, vessel that gets lowered down into the deepest of depths. <laughs> Now, across all the glass shelves of my 20,000 bricks under the sea cabinet, I've got a transitional build. Uh, that is one with some bricks on the uh, top side of the glass uh, and some more making up the other half of a build uh, held onto the underside of the glass using some rare earth magnets. And that gives the impression that certain things are transitioning between two levels so it's not completely flat uh, in each case. Uh, so on the top level I've got loads of these things with loads of ships uh, with the undersides of their hulls being really visible and even a whale transitioning and so on. On the second level uh, going into the third I've got a submarine with half of the body above the glass and most of it below. Uh, and then I just wondered what I could do for the next transition between the third and fourth levels going really deep into the darkest Atlantean depths. Uh, and I thought a diving bell would be a really good idea. Now, uh, these things don't really get used nowadays because, well, we just have submarines so they can get some propulsion because a diving bell would just be lowered down by gravity uh, and that would enable it to be a lot more sort of uh, robustly reinforced, I suppose, so it wouldn't get crushed under the amazing pressures that are under that deep sea. So anyway, I thought this might be quite an easy build, uh, making something relatively round in two halves uh, that can kind of clamp together uh, with the glass level in between them. So that is what we're going to do today. Um, oh, Robin, you've dropped your buzzer, silly man. Uh, anyway, yes, so essentially I'm going to be making kind of like a, a half turtle shell, I suppose, uh, for the bit above the glass, and then the exact mirror on the underside to represent the other half of the sphere that can clamp together. So let's get started with that. Uh, so... The pieces that I'm going to be using for the majority of this build are all the sort of uh, flat and corner sort of panel pieces that came on all of the old diver sets of the, well, 90s, I suppose. And uh, yeah, they're just really in keeping with the colour scheme of everything that I've been doing so far. Uh, and I used these ones, but in yellow on the uh, undersea tunnel, of course. And I just think, well, they're really good with these round windows. I mean, that's the main thing. They really look like they could take a lot of deep sea pressure. Uh, so this is going to be uh, basically the lower floor of the bottom section. So I'm going to have, first of all, an escape hatch on there, which I can just mount on this central stud. And just to give it a bit more interest as well, I'm using these uh, octagonal kind of cone pieces uh, for its four feet, because when it gets lowered down, 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 down into the depths, presumably, eventually, it will reach the bottom. And when it does, it will need to land safely. Now, I do realise already we've got one floor. <laughs> the fact that when you've uh, landed like that, it might be quite difficult to open this uh, <laughs> escape hatch. But there is another way to get in and out. Uh, so, yeah, maybe that folds in a very clever way and uh, still allows uh, access. Or maybe I should just make these feet longer with uh, some one-by-one -one cones on the end. You let me know what you think. Uh, so then we're going to be building kind of uh, out from here using these as the four corners. Uh, and it's going to be a bit fragile before I get it uh, fully reinforced from the inside. Uh, and then these pieces as the flat sides, of course. I've already lost my uh, escape hatch. Uh, and this is where my first sticker is going to come in. And it is XR2 on these panel pieces. And I did come on these panel pieces, but it came on it sort of the other way up. Uh, so I've moved them because uh, they also needed centralizing anyway, uh, using my patented hot tea technique. <laughs> which you can find the explanation for on my uh, tutorials playlist. Uh, yeah, so these came from 1782, the Discovery Station in 1997, uh, where the XR2, in my mind, represents something like, I don't know, experimental research number two. Uh, we don't ask about what happened to XR1, <laughs> aka the Titan, uh, something very bad. And I was thinking, actually, that set does have uh, the XR1 sticker. It seems that uh, the crane in that uh, uh, thing has got the sticker uh, XR1 on it on the platform. So the platform's probably the uh, XR1 vehicle. Uh, the helicopter seems to have XR3 uh, and this uh, submarine in that set uh, had XR2. So maybe 
uh, I need to buy <laughs> that crane piece so I can have XR1 and attach it to a very small piece of wreckage because I think if something like this implodes right at the bottom, then, well, there wouldn't be much to see. So we could just put it on any old tatty bit of white uh, plastic, basically, that remains. Uh, so there we go. There is a nice sort of angular but sort of spherical half shape for our XR2 craft. Very nice with its writing the right way up as we're going to have it. Uh, but I thought I'd make it a little varied by having something different on the fourth side also because these panels are very hard to get hold of. Uh, and that's this piece, which will do a similar job, but it's just a different shape. So I'm going to put a white pan uh, plate on there and a red one on there just to give it a nice interesting stripe. And this, I figure, is the way in and out of this thing when it's on the surface, at least. Uh, that basically two of these sort of hatches open up kind of like a clamshell door uh, and let the people in. Or maybe that's the way they deploy when they're on the sea bottom. I don't know, actually. Could be either, really, couldn't it? I'm just trying to get all these in without losing this uh, again. There we go. So that is our main body. Now I need some reinforcement. So I'm just going to put some bricks and plates on the inside doing... The same job as the pieces on the outside, but hopefully with both there to sandwich everything, it will be stronger and it won't keep falling apart in my fingers. There we go. Now on the inside of this, we can put lots of divers and we can put lots of equipment. But before I bother doing that at the moment, I'm just going to see how much I can actually see through the windows when it's actually in the cabinet. But there we go. Now that's a bit stronger thankfully, uh, and that makes up pretty much one half. But what I'm going to be doing, obviously, is uh, including magnets, so this can be stuck to the underside of some glass. So how I'm going to do that is by this final piece, uh, which has got a little cavity to contain a magnet, and these are the magnets that I'm going to be using. I've got this oh, smaller one for the underside, which can go in here. Uh, and it's free to sort of flop around, so it doesn't really matter about which way around it is at the moment. Uh, and this is a neodymium magnet. I think that's how you say it. <laughs> neodymium uh, disc, which is 15 millimeters by 3 millimeters. They cost about 50 pence. I buy mine from Guy's Magnets. Uh, this one, incidentally, is a half inch cubed. Uh, so basically, uh, they're using imperial and metric units here. Uh, and that one cost about a pound 25. Anyway, uh, this whole setup, we can complete the build by kind of putting that in this area here, where it'll act as a central console, uh, where I can stick some stickers of sort of controls if I need to, uh, and that will join that up, can uh, create a completely flat surface for uh, touching the glass. And there we've got a really pretty, in my opinion, sort of shaped, stickered and textured underside of our diving bell. So I'm going to put that there uh, and then get on with the top half. So I'm going to do this similarly, uh, but different, uh, just to give it even more interesting shape when it's there. Uh, and I think when we've got this in position, we'll have to decide uh, if it really is low enough when it's uh, at the transition point of the glass, because it, it sort of occurs to me that it'll be sort of going into the bottom level of our scene, but not really um, getting far into it. And I suppose this should represent the furthest the humans have got into the depths. So if, well, if they haven't got any further than just the glass transition, then we'll have no humans in that bottom area at all. So maybe, just maybe, I need to uh, add this a lot lower down so we can have more humans ugh, in that bottom section as well, interacting with our Atlantis scenes. So, yeah, you'll have to let me know what you think about that. We'll try it both ways, because I can always take the magnets back out again and uh, basically deploy this uh, without the magnets, just held together with panel uh, bracket pieces on the inside, much like we did the uh, torpedo wagon, uh, and it will still work uh, with its two sides uh, holding together. So there we go. There is that build replicated. Oh, but the other way up with that red stripe again. And this time we've got these corner panels with this lovely little sub logo on all four of those. Uh, and they came from the set 6560 Diving Expedition Explorer from 1997. Uh, and both those divers sets, of course, are part of the inspiration for my cabinet backdrop, the sort of uh, uh, vinyl uh, uh, diorama that I've got set up on the back there. 
which looks very uh, beautiful indeed and was uh, designed by one of you lot, one of you lovely subscribers. So I'm going to have this put in on the inside. Just, oh, there we go. That's the way I need to do it. So that is down. Uh, so that needs to be uh, uh, like that in there. Uh, and then I can put this magnet in here ooh, 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 before adding it uh, to the build. Come on. I'm destroying it as fast as I'm putting it together. There we go. It's ooh, in. So there is our other magnet. I put the stronger one on the top because I figure that will be less weight, uh, but the same uh, magnetic sort of pull. I could have used two cube ones, of course, but basically I ran out. So next time I get some more, I'll be able to do that. So there is our top section. And you can see that's where I use those wedge plates just to create a slightly different sort of uh, pattern than the bottom with its feet and hatch. And I've got this so it can be, well, lowered down, of course. So there we go. Some stickers on the bottom, some stickers on the top, but I'm not done there. Uh, first of all, I'm going to add four of these kind of fin pieces, which I think have as stabilizers, I suppose, that came from the tail of a few Aqua Raider sets, including 7770, the Deep Sea Treasure Hunter from 2007. Oh, so we'll put those on the top. I reckon this is the only way they can sort of steer it maybe, or maybe it just keeps it level uh, for the benefit of the people on the inside, not getting too sick as they go down. And we could have a beastie sort of grappling with this, uh, yeah, much like somebody over there <laughs> on, on its way down. I don't know, but it'd be a lot easier if that's not transitioning between the two uh, layers of glass, if that's what we're going to do. But that looks really fun. A uh, bit of a, <laughs> a mishmash of different logos, but I like it. Uh, and then I figured it'd have loads and loads of scientific equipment on it as well. So I'm going to add a sort of dish thing here. Maybe that's measuring some pressure, aerials and little domes all with scientific uh, equipment in a nice long one there and then maybe a short one on the corner there and why not have another one in white as well and then you've got a very scientific looking diving bell i like the look of that a lot so then we can combine the two halves together get ready for a snap oh <laughs> there we go and yeah that's easy going to support its own weight isn't it so there is our lovely diving bell and i think it looks very scientific indeed i like the red stripe on the uh, exit and the fact that that's a slightly different shape i love the fact that we've got a bit of a backstory with the xr2 uh, stickers on each side uh, and these logos and these ones up here really nice and I even like the feet. Fantastic. So I think we've got two options for this. As I said before, we can either have this transitioning the glass with a glass level in between there, which I, th I think is what I'll do today. Uh, and then basically have no more humans even lower down than that. Or we could have this resting on the bottom, maybe on its side because there's a bit of a problems going on. Uh, and then everyone trying to rescue it or something like that. So yeah, we'll have to decide. But either way, I think it will look very much like this a nice seamless join in the middle. Uh, so let's try this in the cabinet around that glass level. Well, the cabinet is filling up, but there's still an absolute load to go. Haven't even started adding the majority of the coral yet. Uh, but talking of the transitions, there is the underside of the ships and the diving cage and everyone's favorite, I hope, uh, the lovely whale leaping out of the water majestically. <laughs> And then past the uh, backdrop that we were talking about, inspired by those diver sets with that wreck that seems to kind of almost appear and then disappear in the light sequence. I absolutely love that. That is brilliant. Uh, then the panels that we used before on the sea tunnel, with those round windows again. Uh, that will really tie the levels together, I hope. Uh, and then the next transition with this submarine, with the vast majority of the build being under the glass, but all those different perspectives possible looking up or looking down. I really like that. So that is what we're trying to continue when we go down to the wreck level, which is the one with the least done so far. And there's our skull waiting to be used on this level and our diving bell going down to the Atlantean level below. So this should be a satisfying sort of clunk as the two halves join together. Oh, slightly less sort of clunky than I thought, I suppose. If I get some more cube ones, it will be a lot more of a, a firm join, but it's definitely firm enough to keep in position if I line up the two halves. And 
Yeah, that is really nice actually. I love the round windows. Again, we can look at it from above and below or just on the cross section. That is a really good transition actually. Less good from below actually this one, though it's very hard to get this low, so it's not too much of a problem, just because you can see the underside of that strip lighting that will be covered by the biscuit uh, of this level. Essentially there'll be a much bigger cutaway, just like we've got the cutaway here uh, with the submarine, there'll be a much bigger cutaway in this section where I haven't uh, done the strip lighting, and that's where this will be lowered down by another base, because I figure we'll have a human presence on each level, obviously on the surface, this major base here, another base down here, which will be lowering our diving bell. And then, yeah, that's where we come back to our problem. Is that the lowest point that humans have reached? Because it doesn't make much sense if something's lower than the uh, high pressure diving bell. Uh, or maybe I should just rebuild it with brackets and have it on the bottom, and then we can have more humans milling around, interacting, aka fighting, with the Atlanteans. Yeah, but either way, it will be very cool. I'll have to have something else transitioning between the levels if we do have it on the bottom, because this sort of effect is just too cool. Uh, now that does create another problem. Uh, if I have this right on the bottom, then, well, the string would have to go through the glass, and that's quite hard to do. So I'd have to do something similar with the Technic axles that I did with the uh, oil cable that goes up to the oil rig right up there. Uh, essentially, that is about the minimum you can get to magnetize a uh, structure, that sort of thickness, uh, and be able to support its own weight. But I suppose it could be unhooked and the hook could be uh, wound back up to this level uh, for redeployment with the next thing. Maybe they're just testing the, the waters, putting a toe in to see how it is with the diving bell being the most protected as it is. Uh, and then I think whatever we decide, I definitely need to have a face pressed up against that glass. It is quite dark, as I thought, uh, but I think if it's very close to that glass, you'll be able to see a sort of smiling face looking out. Uh, but I don't think it's worth putting stickers on those panels on the inside. Because, uh, well, you just can't even see the panel uh, piece, let alone uh, what would be stuck on it. But yeah, I love the stickers on the outside. I love the round look of it. I think it looks very appropriate indeed, very sort of scientific. Uh, yeah, hopefully it can withstand the pressure. Uh, and we won't need to get the piece with the XR3 sticker on it. <laughs> Uh, okay, so well, tell me what you think. Is it right in this place? Should it be down there on the bottom? The more I'm thinking about it, the more I'm thinking it should be. But uh, yeah, this is how it was designed to be used across the glass. Uh, and do tell me if there's anything I should be adding to the outside. Obviously, it should probably have uh, some creature attacking it. Uh, obviously, we'll need a lot more fish and scenery as well in due course. But uh, for now, this interesting sort of uh, shaped base build I think it looks pretty good. So as always, thank you very much for watching. It is appreciated. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. And if you value this channel, there are many ways in which you can support it. Do check out the links in the description below. And next time on Robin Hood Bricks, it'll be a Wednesday. So we're doing another brick haul. Loads of interesting parts for interesting future builds. Uh, and if you want to send something to uh, Brickhall, you can by sending it to the usual P.O. Box address. Uh, and then on Friday, we'll be up to another build, hopefully in the cabinet, because I'm really enjoying this thing. It's really starting to come together when you get all these different scenes joining up. Cool. So until then, see you. Poor XR1. Didn't stand a chance.